What's up guys, Coding Jesus here. And in this video, I'm gonna be explaining to you what high frequency trading is. I get a lot of videos asking, Coding Jesus, what the hell is high frequency trading? Can you explain it? And I decided that this video will be the first video that I'll be talking about high frequency trading in. Okay, so I want to really make this video about explaining high frequency trading in the simplest possible of terms. So if you don't understand what high frequency trading is at the end of this video, then I've done something wrong. And I know this channel, you know, it's called Coding Jesus. I, I got the Jesus part kind of down. I'm still working on the coding part, but this video will have no coding whatsoever. So if you're new to this channel and you just want to learn about what actually high frequency trading is, then this is the first video for you. It is the right first video for you. Okay, let's get into it. Coding Jesus, what is high frequency trading? High frequency trading, put very simply, is finding opportunities in the market and capitalizing on, about them. Capitalizing on them to be, per, in, to be more precise and doing so in a manner that relies on speed of execution. Okay, what you need to understand is that high frequency traders do not care about what the asset they're trading is. It can be dog shit for all they care. It can be apple, it can be dog shit. It can be a banana, it can be Skittles. They do not care. The only thing they care about is the price they see on the screen because that price is subject to change and all change leads to different opportunity. Okay, so let's actually take a look at a practical application of what high frequency traders would do. And I think the simplest strategy to discuss today is a strategy called arbitrage, okay? Like I said, guys, price is simply a number on a screen. And different people, especially in places across the globe, have different numbers on their screen for the same commodity. Let me give you an example. A banana, where I am right now in Toronto, might cost a dollar. A banana, maybe in somewhere in the States, like Chicago, might cost two dollars. Let's say I, I'm a high frequency trader and I have a operation in which I get a bunch of people to buy bananas in Canada and sell them in the US. Okay, I don't care what the underlying commodity is. It just happens to be bananas, but I see a discrepancy in price that I can capitalize in the arbitrage strategy to actually make money. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and buy bananas in Toronto and sell them in Chicago. Conversely, I can sell a bunch of bananas in Chicago and go ahead and buy back those bananas in Toronto and make a dollar on each banana. Okay, so that's a given strategy that people would use as high frequency traders. Now in high frequency trading, it's called high frequency for a reason. And I was hinting at this at the beginning of the video. Oftentimes these opportunities arrive and they also disappear just as quickly as they've, they've arisen. So it's very important in high frequency trading to be able to capitalize on opportunities quickly because if you do not capitalize on those opportunities, then other people will capitalize on those opportunities for you. Let me distill this in another strategy that somebody might employ at a high frequency trading firm. Before I talk about the strategy, guys, it's important to realize that there are thousands of different firms all, all, that all call themselves high frequency trading firms. And not all of, this, all of them employ the same strategies. They might all employ the same basic type of strategies, but different strategies have different, different firms have different strategies. And different firms might employ proprietary strategies that other firms don't even know about, okay? They have some sort of model, they hire really smart people to think about ways to take advantage of prices in the, in the actual marketplace, okay? I just spoke to you guys about a strategy that involves not caring about the actual value of the underlying commodity, okay? When I was speaking to you guys about bananas, I didn't care at all that I was trading a banana. I just saw that the price in one place is different from the price in the other, and that brought upon something called an arbitrage opportunity, a riskless opportunity. Whether or not that's truly riskless is up for another video, but that's the opportunity that presented itself. Another opportunity that a high frequency trading firm might look at might actually involve subjective valuation. So they might create a given amount of models for a given commodity that might price a commodity at a given price, okay? Their model puts out a subjective valuation for bananas at $1.50. That's what they're worth. They don't care what it's currently worth in the market. If it's not worth $1.50 in the market, there's an opportunity. But their subjective valuation is $1.50. Now, disregard what communists tell you, value is not objective, it is totally subjective because each one of us have our own subjective valuations for how we weigh both our needs and our wants in light of the resources that we have. But regardless, what I'm getting at here is that these firms will go ahead and implement some sort of model that will push out a subjective price. Now, these are really smart people and they are very certain that their price is right. That bananas are actually worth $1.50 even though the market's pricing them at a dollar. So what do they go ahead and do? 
they go ahead and buy a bunch of bananas at a dollar, hoping that in the very near term, or maybe it, that, might, that might mean a day, that might mean three seconds, that might mean three weeks, but in the very near term, the price will reach equilibrium, and by that I mean reach their subjective valuation for that given commodity. Now what that means is they're taking on a significant amount of risk, which they have to then hedge out in the market. I don't wanna to get too complex here, but it means they have to get rid of that risk somehow in the market. Why are they taking risk in this strategy? They are taking on a risk because if the price of bananas does not move towards $1.50 and stays below a dollar for an extended period of time, well then they're actually losing money for going making that trade. They are losing money for doing so. They bought a bunch of bananas at a dollar. Their models told them the bananas are worth $1.50, but bananas have been at 90 cents for the past three months and they're scratching their head thinking, what are we gonna do with all these bananas? Okay, so there is a degree of risk with this strategy, just like there is in almost every quantitative strategy or every strategy employed by hedge funds and high frequency trading firms in particular. Okay guys, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you learned something from it. I wanted to make it as simple as possible, guys. If you liked this video, if you found it interesting, make sure to hit that subscribe button and smash the thumbs up button, guys. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you guys wanna join our community, the Church of Coding Jesus, I have a Discord link in the description box below. And if you guys would like to tie to the Church of Coding Jesus, I have a Patreon link in the description box below. The last thing I'm gonna say, guys, is I'm offering career and resume mentorship and review services. So if you want me as a mentor or as a career coach, whether you are a computer science student or a self-taught developer, link in the description box below, guys. Once again, guys, thanks for watching this video. Cheers.